What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where on every episode, I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And to that end, we are concluding our long look at John Ramirez's reasons why Christians should have nothing to do with Halloween. Stick around. <laughs> So thus far, I've got to say, we've heard four rather stupid, non-biblical, uncompelling arguments as to why Christians should have nothing to do with Halloween. And this stems from John Ramirez's inability to separate traditions that have nothing to do with the occult and the occult that he used to be a part of. It comes from John Ramirez's inability to understand that what he was told when he was a Satan worshiper was a lie, because the devil is the father of lies. And he is now in the church teaching for shameful gain that which ought not be taught by continuing to perpetuate the lies of Satan under the mask and guise of being a Christian pastor. That's right. It is my conclusion, after having watched all of this, that John Ramirez is still in the service of the devil, not the Lord because he is perpetuating to the church the lies of the devil as if they were the truth. And there's nothing that Jesus hates more from his own words than when we teach as doctrine the traditions of men, let alone the traditions of the devil. So let's get in to argument number five from John Ramirez. And he's going to pray for us. And then we're going to hear a closing statement from that popular video that our charismatic and Protestant friends like to share with us. But I'm going to tell you from the devil, ex-devil worship for 25 years. You know, a lot of these candies that you, you give your kitchen, you buy in the stores in Halloween, they are prayed for. These candies are prayed for over de demonic people have prayed over these candies. They know what they're doing. They pray over these costumes. They know what they're doing. I mean, I live in the city in my hand, right? And they, and they rent the store, right? Every year, they rent the store. You know how much the rent in that store costs for the month of, 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 of October for them to sell costumes? $30,000 a month. How is it they got this kind of money to rent a store to sell costumes? These costumes are prayed for, they're demonic. And if you have opened the door to your children on this situation, on this demonic situation, circumstance, or celebration, or a holiday, what they call it holiday, I call it demonic. If you have opened your door and you today, you see that your kid has wavered, your kids have left the things of the Lord, your thing is no, your kids are no longer functioning in the, in the Holy Spirit, you need to repent, you need to renounce, you need to cut the rope, you need to give the devil an eviction notice and ask God, Lord, forgive me. All right. <laughs> Demon candy. Reason, I, you cannot make this up. Reason number five, that Christians should have nothing to do with Halloween, demon candy. And again, his appeal to authority that he was a former Satan worshiper and they pray over these candies. They go into the store, they say their little blah, 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 over the candy, and now you're eternally cursed because you ate a Reese's that was prayed over by a Satanist. I wonder what would happen if a Christian ate meat sacrificed to a pagan idol. Would we be cursed? Well, it, according to John Ramirez, yes. According to the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, no. Because these are false gods. These are false idols. And they have no power. So whatever the devil worshippers are doing to the candy in the stores, it cannot touch you. And it should not burden your conscience to eat that candy. Because their prayers are false. Their prayers are to a fallen angel, not to God. There's a power difference here. The devil should not be viewed as equal but opposite to God. There is God, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Lucifer, a part of that creation. Yes, he is even God's devil. And so he is a created being. He does not have the attributes of God himself. So we should not fear him. And we don't have to worry about this demonic candy. And I'm going to say it right here. 
If your kids aren't walking in the spirit anymore, what he means by that is charismaticism. If your kids aren't a charismatic, fundamentalist, evangelical like you, if they don't subscribe to this garbage and crap, if their reason and logic has led them to believe that this is stupid, because it is, then they are no longer saved. And it's because you celebrated Halloween. It's not because you've believed falsely. It's not because you've believed the words of the devil coming at you from the mouth of a Christian pastor. No, it's because you participated in Halloween. That's why your kids are falling away from the faith. Not because you're raising them in a faith that, uh, in a faith that is false. No. Because you celebrated Halloween. So, doesn't matter that he's a heretic. Doesn't matter that in this prayer we're about to play, he's going to prove himself to be a word of faith heretic. Doesn't matter. If your children fell away, it's because you dressed them up as Pikachu and you're going to hell. Let's listen to how this man prays. The Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we destroy, we work our darkness, Father God, every bad decision that we have made. Father God, shed light in the hearts of parents and, and churches, Lord, today, in the name of Jesus Christ. We break every stronghold. We break every demonic bondage of Halloween, Father God. We set the, we give the devil an eviction notice today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, right now, in the Jesus Christ, every household that is under the, my voice Casting today is watching this video. It's not a coincidence. This is a divine appointment to cancel the devil and say, yes to Jesus Christ over this demonic holiday. Lord Jesus Christ, set your people free. Open their hearts to see the demonic side of who Halloween is. And this is the devil's holiday and we don't celebrate the devil. We celebrate Jesus Christ until he calls us home in Jesus' name. None of that is in Jesus' name. That is not how Jesus taught us to pray. When the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, he did not say, bang down the gates of heaven with everything that you declare and you decree and you do and you break and you bind and you loose. Break down the doors of heaven with your positive affirmations because your words create your reality. Jesus never taught us to pray like that. That is a demonic prayer. That is how the devil wants you to pray because the emphasis is on you, the Christian, not the Christ. The prayer that Jesus gave us to pray when the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, is our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the tradition of the church later added, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That's how Christians pray. And if you go to a church where they pray like that, you are in a church run by the devil himself because they are boosting and affirming you, the Christian, and not Christ. Jesus taught us to pray with boldness and confidence, yes, to the Father as his beloved children. We ask, we beseech, we reach out. And in some circumstances, when we're truly repentant, we beg. And it delights the Lord to answer a prayer like that with a yes. A broken and contrite spirit, the Lord will not despise. That's not a broken and contrite spirit. That is a spirit of the devil that has boosted up the ego and the greatest idol that we all build for ourselves, and that is ourselves. John Ramirez loves nothing more than himself. And he loves to give himself to people, of course, for a fee. You got to pay for it. You got to pay for it. So given that this is the end and this is Reformation Day, we're going to listen to a closing statement from John Ramirez. And then I am going to make a Reformation closing statement. Don't let the entrapment and the lies and the deception, there's something that looks cool, that looks good, that looks harmless, send you to a place that you spend your eternity and never to return and never to even say nothing because you are separated from a holy God. You're separated from a place that God has predestined for you to live with him for an eternity. And my message today, Brother Shannon, is I will say like Ezekiel say in, 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 in chapter 33, the train is coming and you're sitting on the tracks. And I say to you, get off the tracks. The train is coming. The watchman on the wall. And that's what I'm talking about. So your blood today is off my hands. 
because I told you what Halloween is about. Now, if you want to celebrate it, that's up to you. If you want to do harvest in your church, that's up to you. But I sounded the trumpet, and I'm telling you today, whoever celebrates Halloween is cursed beyond they can imagine. I leave you with this. It's time to repent. It's time to turn to Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn it over to you, Shannon. I agree, John Ramirez. It's time for you to repent and turn to Jesus Christ. And if you buy into this kind of garbage, by John Ramirez's own words, stop being deceived by things that sound cool. John Ramirez's statements throughout all of this have been pseudo-profound. They have been word salad, just a conglomeration of things that are supposed to sound good, but there's no real flow, there's no real context, there's no biblical backing for anything. It's just word salad to make him sound important so that he can convince you that everything in Satanism is actually true and you as a Christian are bound to what Satanists believe. So don't let something that sounds cool send you to hell. Get out of the churches that teach these things and get into the churches that teach the gospel. And now, because it is October 31st, because it is Halloween, because it is All Hallows Eve, because it is Reformation Day, here is how I want to conclude the entirety of this series. A mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. He helps us free from every need that hath us now or taken. The old evil foe now means deadly woe. Deep guile and great might are his dread arms in fight. On earth is not his equal. With might of ours cannot be done. Soon were our loss effected. But for us fights the valiant one, whom God himself elected. Ask ye who is this? Jesus Christ it is of Sabaoth, Lord, and there's none other God. He holds the field forever. Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us, we tremble not, we fear no ill, they cannot overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. One little word can fell him. The word they still shall let remain, nor any thanks have for it. He's by our side upon the plain with his good gifts and spirit. And take they our life, goods, fame, child and wife, though these all be gone. Our victory has been won. The kingdom, ours, remaineth. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. <laughs> you can stop the things I do. I ain't lying. No! No! Don't listen to them! In 300 years, right down to the day, 